Hello friends, this video on mechanical properties of fluids part 27 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 26 before going ahead with part 27. What we are discussing viscosity of fluids, it is very important to discuss Stokes law. This is a very important law related to viscosity. So let us see what is Stokes law. The law states that the force that retards a sphere moving with through a viscous fluid is directly proportional to the velocity and radius of the sphere and the viscosity of the fluid. That means According to Stokes law, let us suppose we have any object which is moving through a viscous fluid, right? Whenever I talk of viscous fluid, the best example which we, you can think in your mind is honey. However, all the fluids that we see around us has some viscosity. But when you actually try to think of a viscous fluid, you, we tend to think of honey because the coefficient of viscosity for honey is quite higher. So, if there is an object which moves through a viscous fluid, in that case, the force that retards the sphere, as I told you, due to the property of viscosity, there will be a retardation. I mean, there will be a force which will try to stop the motion of the object. So, Stokes law says that that retarding force is directly proportional to velocity and radius of the sphere and the viscosity of the fluid. So let us suppose if that retarding force is F, then it is directly proportional to velocity, it is directly proportional to the radius of the sphere and it is also directly proportional to the coefficient of viscosity of the fluid. Stokes law is applicable only to laminar flow of fluids. That means it is not applicable in case of turbulent flow. See, these small, small points are very important to remember. As I told you in case of Pascal's law, long back, the Pascal's law is applicable only for uniform fluids. Similarly, when we talked about Bernoulli equation, we said that it is applicable only for incompressible fluids. So, those conditions are very important to be remembered. That which law is applicable for what? So this is the expression for Stokes law that is F is equal to 6 pi eta RV. As I had written here, it is proportional to these three quantities. So we have to introduce a constant to equate the equation and that constant is 6 pi. Well, the derivation of this equation is not required at this level and this derivation has been, I mean, it has been derived experimentally depending upon lots of experiments. So, it is enough at your level to know the expression for Stokes law. So, here eta is the coefficient of viscosity, r is the radius of the sphere and v is the velocity of the sphere. Now we will take an example to illustrate the Stokes law. Let us take the example of falling raindrops. All of us have experienced rain. Every now and then we experience rain. Now I will tell you one interesting fact about raindrops. You forget about the rain, just concentrate on a single raindrop. Let us suppose this is a raindrop. Okay, so what happens through the motion of the raindrop? A raindrop initially when it comes through the air, what is air? Air is a fluid and air has some viscosity of its own. So air is again a viscous medium. Now when a raindrop falls through air, that is it is falling through a viscous medium. So there will be some force which will try to stop the motion of the raindrop. What basically happens is initially the raindrop accelerates as it passes through the air. That is it, its velocity increases. But after some time it is found that the raindrop falls with constant velocity. So that means initially the raindrop accelerates. 
later it moves with constant velocity that means acceleration becomes zero right so what makes this happen why is it so this is because initially when the raindrops fall through the atmosphere its velocity increases now as the well as i told you just before in the previous slide that in stokes law it state it says that the retarding force is proportional to the velocity of the sphere now as the velocity of the raindrop increases the retarding force also increases now a stage comes when both the forces balance each other that is let us suppose this is the raindrop the force which attracts it downwards is the force due to the gravitational attraction of the earth so this fg will be acting downwards and the motion is also taking place downwards so the retarding force which will act in the opposite direction that is in the upward direction there will be one force that is the viscous force let us write it as fv there will also be another force called buoyant force all of you must be aware of buoyant force you would have learned it in your junior classes buoyant force is nothing but when an object moves through a fluid due to the movement or the due to the pressure exerted by the object downwards there is an upward thrust which is exerted by the fluid so that upward thrust is buoyant force so in the downward direction act the force due to the gravitational attraction this force is in favor of the motion whereas the forces which act in the opposite direction that is the retarding forces are the viscous force and the buoyant force now a stage comes when this gravitational force fg becomes equal to the sum of the viscous force and the buoyant force that means the retarding forces becomes equal to the gravitational force as a result the net force which is acting on the raindrop becomes zero now we know that force is equal to mass into acceleration so if force becomes zero acceleration also becomes zero so a body which is moving with zero acceleration is said to be moving with constant velocity so i hope you understood so all the raindrops which you see around initially they accelerate that is initially their velocity increases but as their velocity increases the retarding force also increases because according to stokes law the retarding force is proportional to the velocity of the object now a stage comes when the retarding force becomes equal to the gravitational attraction of the earth as a result the net force acting on the raindrop becomes zero therefore the acceleration becomes zero and the body moves with constant velocity thank you please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thank you once again